earlier about drying foods with the fire. Well, how do you do that? Well, you know, we have a misconception about drying foods or even smoking foods. Uh, what we, You want to dry food at the lowest heat possible for a couple of reasons. One reason is if you dry it at high heat, it's going to cook before it gets dry. And dried food has to be raw or as close to raw as possible or it's not going to keep very well. So in order to dry food, the first thing I look for is the sun. If I have an area that's where, where it's low humidity and I have good sunlight, I cut whatever I'm going to dry, whether it's vegetables, fruits, um, meat, and mostly dry meat, I, or with fruit, you, you, you want to get it as thin as possible so that it dries as quickly as possible. Um, anything, any moist food is going to be attracting something or other, you know, either flies, you're going to be laying eggs, you're going to have maggots in your meat, or uh, fruit is going to be attracting anything from bees to bears, <laughs> neither of which you want around. So you want to get your, your, your food dried as fast as possible. Now, fruit can be easily dried, even, um, even um, you know, juicy fruits like, like, um, like peaches, uh, pears, plums, um, raspberries, by Taking a, uh, something that's a big flat surface, like a, like a piece of bark, we have birch trees here, and you can take off beautiful flat sheets of bark and lay the berries out and smash them so that you just spread them into a thin, thin layer on the bark and lay that out in the sun, and it dries very, very fast, and you're actually making fruit leather. So you just peel it off and roll it up when it's dry. It dries in a couple few hours sometimes if you have a good day. Otherwise, it might take a day or two. And you store the fruit leather away, which is high in sugar content, low in moisture, and it, it keeps very well. Uh, you just need to pack it into a container so there's no air in it, so that it doesn't go rancid, so it doesn't mold. Um, and the same with meat. Cut it very thin. The thinner you cut it, the faster it's going to dry, and, and um, the better your quality of your jerky. And some people will cut it with the grain, and... I encourage people to cut across the grain because then you're exposing all these pores in the meat and it dries much faster. And it's also easier to crumble if you're going to throw it into stew or soup or something like that. I, I guess there's a couple questions. There's a question from Shitstain, one of our buddies here at the, the GLP chat. And um, he says, so like, let's say you're not near a river or anything like that. Would you drink your own urine? Yeah, I would, definitely. You know, urine is... Well, it, 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 I, I've got to qualify that. Urine is sterile when it comes out of your body. Oh, okay. So if you drink it immediately when it comes out of your body, it's going to help keep you alive. Uh, if you have some water, you can mix it half and half with water. The same with seawater, actually. If you have salt water, if you can mix it half and half with fresh water, it's a whole lot better than drinking it straight because it's going to kill you otherwise. So mix it half and half. One problem with urine is that if you're well hydrated, your um, your urine is uh, just a light, light yellow color. Uh, if you're drinking too much water, your urine is clear and you're, you're flushing electrolytes out of your body. You're drinking too much. And this is really important in a survival situation because you want to hang on to those electrolytes. Now, if your urine gets too deep yellow, um, you're dehydrated. And drinking that urine is just going to concentrate the salts in your body and it's not going to be good. So if you have to drink your urine, uh, hopefully you're you're getting enough moisture in your body that you, you, your urine is a nice light color. Okay, yeah, I, I'm sorry. Uh, it wasn't shit stain that asked that. I think it was uh, Calm Shock he asked that one. I don't want to upset anybody. If he goes out camping there, he's going to have to change his name to Bear Tracks. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a, you know, there's a guy, Tamarack, and again, since we're on the urine part, uh, there's a guy in Japan that has developed – there's people they say that there's protein in feces in, in human shit i guess and uh he actually makes in japan he makes shit burgers and this isn't a joke you can look this up now we're talking about urine would you eat your dung uh dude seriously 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a no, question. No, don't even go down that path. You'd be dead in 15 minutes flat. Yeah. <laughs> because again, we're talking about in Japan. They it's were doing true. It. They did. Yeah. They've done it. You know, yeah. if you have to eat something, you can also eat the uh, the uh, the cambium layer of a tree. Okay. If, if you're really hungry, you can peel off the bark, cut away the cambium layer of the tree, pound it with a rock, and suck on the juices, and you can get some nourishment there. <laughs> right. It right. kills. It'll kill the tree. You understand that? Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Getting, getting back to your question about eating your own shit, um, I would eat some animal scat um, for two reasons. One is if I'm eating a lot of berries, if that's all I have, there's not enough fiber in those berries. You oftentimes end up getting constipated or else uh, diarrhea. It depends upon the person. It depends upon the berries. Now, if you find some old scat from um, rabbits or snowshoe hares or deer that has a lot of fiber in it, um, that will help put some bulk in your in your body instead of all that juicy fruit and you eat that along with the fruit and it's going to help you keep going to help you not get plugged up now as far as nourishment from scat uh, bear scat is really good because they have inefficient digestive systems if ever you've seen a, a bear scat and it's a berry season or whatever they're eating they're eating nuts you see chunks of nuts coming right out and you see uh whole berries sometimes you know we've got um, wild cherries here and they just gulp the cherries down and they come out whole out of the other end it's just amazing uh and and you can rinse this stuff off and eat it or you can just cook wow. it the best thing with um with predator scat because of the parasites that um because the, the, many predators are omnivores we are omnivores too we have some of the same parasites so you don't pick up the parasites is to uh cook it first and it is edible and it will keep you going you yeah go. you know some people say you haven't tasted my wife's cooking it'll be better eating that stuff uh, <laughs> and somebody oh, else boy. said someone else also said on the chat room well you have to try my dingleberry so <laughs> I'm not uh, that one. Oh, all right God, all right where wow. is the show going <laughs> uh, I think we're just going to have to terminate everybody yeah. <laughs> <laughs>